Welcome back to another amazing episode of the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. My name is Andrew. This is my lovely wife, Nona. And uh, we're finally professional with Nona. Are we? Yeah, we have brand new microphones. We've got all kinds of other fun stuff coming. Um, Eventually, we'll have another set that's not in our office, so we're not crammed in our office between the set so, yeah. don't act like you don't hate squeezing past me on my walking treadmill and grabbing my ass every time you have to squeeze i can do past that me. i can do that without <laughs> i can do that comfortably without this whole nonsense <laughs> being in the way so uh this is episode 50 so conveniently wow we have upgraded equipment for the big five out yep Episode 50 is we here, guys. We are much professional. Yep. Um, <laughs> and everything seems to be working okay. This is actually our third mic. The second one went back and have a replacement coming for that. So we'll have guest microphone or guests microphone because we did find that they worked okay being at a, at a distance. Mm-hmm. So we can set it up and we'll actually make sure that we do good sound checks when we have guests that way we don't end up with a far along episode that we can't use yep and tansy i mean it was a it was a great time tansy and ashley a waste of time eric and ashley are going to come back probably next month i mean they're in wilmington all the time anyway so oh that's cool yeah so they'll be back for that um make sure well actually so this will come out after the first right what day is the first monday is monday the first i think so i think monday is the first Monday is the first. Yes. So if you're watching this, the 500 subscriber giveaway just ended. And at the time of recording this, which is Wednesday the 26th, we have 438. So we gained like 30 subscribers yesterday. So uh, yeah, we got four more days, four more days to do essentially 60 subscribers. That's too easy. Um, And just remember- Too easy, he says. Too easy. Well, that's okay. So that's another military term. Okay. When you understand something, you have no questions. Okay. Too easy. Like, okay. I got it. I understand. I can do it. Okay. Yeah. So, too easy. Okay, guys. He says it's too easy. Too easy. Yeah. We should have set the goal for a thousand. No, I'm just kidding. That'll be August's goal. Well, I don't know a date yet. We'll, we'll see how things go. Uh, but I think, I think August would be a good goal for a thousand. No, it should be before August. Like when? I thought the next section of um, giveaway would be a thousand, and that's middle of July. You think we can go from yes five hundred yes. five hundred and three months to a thousand and three and a half months? Right. Or no, it would be right on four months, three and a yes. half. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. We need to shorten the timeline and ramp up the options because it's two five hundred gift cards yep. for a thousand. So it should be by like the 20th of July. And if you've, you're have you already subscribed now, stay subscribed because you'll be eligible for that. Right. Just continue leaving comments. Don't unfollow as soon as you win a gift card. Yeah. <laughs> so the, obviously, so like we said, this video will go up on the day after, but we're recording right. five days in advance. Right. So we don't know if we hit it. We're assuming we hit it. I'm sure we'll hit it. Um, like you said, too easy. Yeah. So stay subscribed because yes. you will be eligible for the next one. Yes. And there will be two. Just continue leaving comments and you'll be good to go. Um, this episode is sponsored by nonaphelps.com. Get some insurance. And yes, America's Technology Center of Excellence, Lee Max Media. Check that out. Link in the description. Um, moving right along then, Nona. Yes, sir. We've Andrew. got some guests. We've got some guests lined up. Okay. We're going to have... My boys from Guardian Guardian of Valor on. Oh, yeah? Yep. We're going to have a buddy of mine who runs. Uh, so it's a whole weird scenario because South Africa is basically just in a like civil war, but there's like no sides. It's basically the wild. Like end of days. No, it's like the wild, wild west. Okay. It's just everybody's policing themselves. So they roll around, patrol their own country on their own. Okay. Copper is the biggest issue there. Copper thieves. They will literally rent equipment, dig trenches. I'll have to call him back. Um, 
yeah, run equipment, dig trenches, literally pull up the copper like pipes and lines and utilities wow. and shit like that. Yeah. So he's he's posting stuff all the time about literally getting into gunfights in like a neighborhood like this. That's insane. Yeah. I cannot imagine. Yeah. People breaking into houses to steal stuff like that, just to scrap copper for uh, and honestly, I mean, we've we've always had an issue with copper thieves here in the US, but mm-hmm the price always seems to like tank and then they stop they find something else and then the price of copper seems to go back up and they do it again and then it tanks mm-hmm. you've seen the meme i'm sure where uh people have posted the uh what a uh, speed trap camera system looks like and they're like there's approximately a thousand dollars worth of copper in here for anybody that <laughs> any <laughs> no, copper I've thieves i've never so. seen that yeah so yeah Go, right. go find yourself. They're not legal anyways. So if you voluntarily pay a red light ticket, you're an idiot. You're just dumb. They're just harassing you and you're just dumb. The Constitution says you have to be able to face your accuser. So you can't face a camera in court. Okay. <clears throat> it's it, They literally ride on people being dumb. Mm-hmm. The entire premise is, oh, you're too dumb to know any different. But uh, so, yeah, so we've got Guardian of Valor. We've got, um, and of course now I'm blanking on his name. Um, and he's got a pretty significant following. He's trying to write a book right now and he's got some other projects that he wants to work on talking about what's going on. The person in, whose name you're forgetting? Yeah, in South Africa. Yeah. Here, I can just pull it up real Aww. quick. Oh, I'm not mean. Okay, so he goes by K9 Reaper on uh, Twitter if you guys want to follow him. K9 underscore Reaper is his thing. Um, so he'll be on Guardian of Valor slash Stolen Valor. And then the guys from uh, uh, U.S. Army What the Fuck Moments will okay. be on. Uh, Justin might come on. He's got to see what his schedule's like. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully he sees this episode before he gets what I just mailed to him today because that'd be funny. That would be really funny. I hope I hope you enjoy uh, your – yeah, you should get it, right? Normal mail should get to Minnesota in five in, days. I was going to say three. Yeah, so – Justin, if you're seeing this, that was hand drawn. And the the other guy, the so I told him um, to send me his address, mm-hmm. and then one of his uh, summer giveaway winners because they're okay. doing like a daily giveaway okay. in Spearhead. And so the the other guy, that's why I had to put the label over the label thing because both of them are Justin, uh-huh. and I wrote the wrong address. And there was this, one of the specific drawings from Charlotte. I wanted to go to Justin, mm-hmm. the one that she had to scribble out something, mm-hmm. and made sure that the pristine one. Went to his giveaway winner. Aww. So and thank you, Justin, for that letter. It was very <laughs> sweet of you. Yeah. So in the envelope is uh, the inspiration picture. So it's your one of your profile pictures that Charlotte took inspiration from to hand draw your portrait and color it for you. So I hope that you like it and enjoy it. She put a lot of time into that. That's her passion is is artwork and drawing. So, um, and then I talked to Nick Irving. The Reaper, so another Reaper. Completely different people. Okay. One's a deadly American sniper, U.S. Army sniper. Okay. The other one is a South African civilian. Okay. Two, yeah. Okay. Similar name, two different people. Um, and then Zachary Bell, potentially closer to August, depending on what he's going on. Gotcha. Um, Eli from the Unsubscribe podcast, potentially around that same time. Gotcha. So. All right. That's what we've got Sounds cooking. Sounds like a full I think summer. I, oh, and um, the guy that owns um, Savage Tactical. Oh. Or Savage Tacticians. Savage Tacticians is what it's called. I still love the way that you uh, ended up talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> a little, little midget <laughs> former uh, uh, model for their company who turned out to be a Nazi um, was trying to harass my wife. So ended up reaching out like, hey, what's up with your boy? Because he had pictures modeling their apparel and they're like no no not our boy yeah no there was there was like a whole investigation (laughs) of the guy like somebody tagged me in an instagram thread about it like this guy you know dug back into like all of his social media accounts and like police records and all kinds of stuff like that so yeah fucking loser and he's like five foot four (laughs) so he was like come up to here my wife so um yeah (laughs) <laughs> that's what we've got. That's what we've got coming. Up. Oh, and uh, Emery King, potentially as well, okay. depending on what his schedule's like. Okay. But I want I want him to come to town. Mm-hmm. So we have to make arrangements with somebody. I talked. Pat was like, "Yeah, dude, fuck yeah." But I don't. Do we want to go to Southport to do that? 
sure. to do a live show? Absolutely. Okay. Right. Let's do it. All right. Well, and we haven't even been to the new bar. So I love Southport. It's one of my favorite towns. The Royal James Rummery. If you're in Southport, North Carolina, check that place out. And the pub of Southport, they're owned by the same people. So one of them is an Irish pub. And then the other one, which is closer to the beach, is the Royal James Rummery. And we haven't been there. It's like three stories with like a rooftop bar and yeah, we'll have to water, go a water overlook view area. Uh, like they got pool tables. <laughs> I'm a web developer, so I've seen pictures of it, but I haven't physically <laughs> been there. So, yeah. Um, and let us know if, if actually if any of our guests, you know, are interested in coming on. We might do something like that. I know Nona has been wanting to do an AMA really yes. bad. I want to. And uh, oh, John Cardillo will come on as well pretty soon. Okay. Um, his cousin, who is a psychiatrist, psychologist, okay. one of the two. Um, going to come on and analyze us? Well, and she's a relationship therapist. Right. So, and analyze yeah, us? Yeah. And he gave the idea that we should do a show where we actually have the guest be like a judge and we bring up topics that we disagree on and then they're the arbiter and decide who's right and who's wrong. So this is gonna be a shit show. Yeah, we've got a lot. Of, <laughs> we've got a lot of stuff coming up this summer. Um, the new set. Yes. The sale Thank of the you. house that'll happen before this episode yes. comes out. Oh my! Don't jinx it. Seriously, don't jinx it. I think the fire's out. So. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that was a lot of babbling, to talk about what's upcoming. That was almost twelve minutes of just nothing. Sorry about that. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> um you had some topics yeah talk talk about some topics oh okay i thought y you said you were in charge today so. i kind of had some stuff too but I, i'm not organized right now <laughs> okay. You're not i just organized. i just said all this shit up 20 minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> this one came in the mail about 45 minutes ago and the first thing i did was test it to make sure i didn't set it all up and it not work so hopefully it's working because <laughs> we're not monitoring audio right now we did do a sound check Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. So first thing is prices are fucking insane. And apparently $250,000 annually is the new minimum wage and people are living well, that's, paycheck. That's not to, minimum wage. That's, that's what people are considering the, the mean livable wage. Okay. Whatever. Paycheck to paycheck at $250,000 a year. And it's what would have been there's a there's a lot eighty thousand dollars in nineteen ninety. What a, our parents there's were. a lot of areas in the country that skew that though. Like yeah, our, yeah, no, absolutely. Our California, area, New York. Our area is on the upper end of like middle class livable um, until you get to the water. Then it's just out of like right. Every probably thousand yards from here that you get closer to the water, you're going to go up a zero. <laughs> Sounds about right. It sounds about right. Yeah. But you look, if you remove like New York, LA, mm -hmm. Chicago, Miami, I would say you could probably Austin. knock off a hundred from the 250 and down to 150. Yeah. Anything less than 150 in this area, yeah. you're for sure living paycheck to paycheck. You're yeah. yep. questioning your life. Have I succeeded in life at 35 years old? No, definitely See? doesn't feel that's like why, it. That's why I'm always like, Penny pinching and yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, so basically fucking expensive to live and it's ridiculous. So something humorous to uh, make us feel a little okay. better after feeling like shit. Okay. Um, a woman gave birth at Golden Corral. Have you ever been to a Golden Corral? Mm, yes, but I didn't want to be there. Does anybody choose to go so, there for the fun of going there? So it was um, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. And it was the reserve unit that I went into initially okay. when I got off of active duty. Mm -hmm. I had to go up and sign in, do all my paperwork and everything before I went to Germany. Okay. And the first sergeant and commander wanted to take me to lunch. Oh, he took you and to the Golden Corral. Yeah, he loved yeah. you so much. Two people. That's First sergeant and commander are two different people. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that was where they told me that I was going to have babysitting duties in Germany for three weeks. 
But that wasn't bad. That was a good experience. And I got to see a high school buddy of mine while I was there. So, Did you get food poisoning? No. In what Germany? did you eat? Oh, a golden, I didn't eat a golden crow. So you just sat there? I drove up there. I day tripped it because it was like two hours away. So I drove up there and I just hung out, did my paperwork, whatever, and turned around and drove back. So they took you to so, lunch and you didn't get lunch? Yeah. I wasn't going to fucking eat there. <laughs> this is a hospital medical detachment out of Detroit that the uh, detachment was in Grand Rapids. So it was all it was all medics and stuff like that, at least. So I was actually with my peers for once instead of being with MPs or infantry or whatever else. But they were all so they were all junior, like had just enlisted. And I just came off active duty. They've never been on active duty. And then we went to Germany for three, there was six of us that went to Germany. And not only that, but I look like a fucking jackass because the unit didn't have uh, anything from supply before we left. Because this is all last minute. Like I was in school. I had, I had been on terminal leave, completed terminal leave. They contacted me and said, hey, I think it was like a 90 or 180 days, 120, I don't know what it was, um, before I was supposed to report between like when I got off, when I finished leave and when I was supposed to report. Okay. And they called me and they said, hey, um, we have this opportunity where you can go to Germany for three weeks and then you won't have to do your two weeks of AT annual training in the summer Mm -hmm. with us. Um, And I was like, okay, sure. I'll fucking go to Germany for three weeks. And yeah, so that's, and I I had to leave school a week early. So I had to take my finals a week early. Fortunately, these were all my like hundred level classes because I'm a brand new freshman, you know, with, I mean, I had credits, but nothing that applied to the programs that I was going into. So took my finals, flew out a week early, landed in Germany hours after bin Laden was killed. May 1st. Yeah. I'll never forget. All I'll ever remember is landing in the airport and them having American news on, like on every TV. And it was just like CNN, Fox News, blah, blah, blah. Bin Laden's dead. Bin Laden raid. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then my phone. So I had T-Mobile at the time, so it worked there. My phone's blowing up from people, social media, and texting me and things like that. Oh my God, what were you really doing? I wasn't. I'm not a Navy SEAL, dude. I'm I'm a medic in the army. Two two very different things. Didn't go on that mission with them. I promise you. Sure. No. No. Never happened. Sure. Don't try and no, don't try and get me into this fucking stolen valor shit. All right. So anyways, so this woman gave birth at Golden Corral and she named the baby after Golden Corral. I heard about that. I didn't hear about that, but I heard about the baby being named Golden Corral. Which do you think she chose from Golden or Corral? Do you think it was full Both? golden? Yeah. Oh, no. See, at least at least a golden, like at least it could be no it's corral corral boy or girl girl so it's probably pronounced coral then no that is not spelled that's not how you spell but i bet you i bet you they'll pronounce it coral because everybody's gonna make fun of them they're gonna say it's just a weird spelling like my brother Nope. my my brother's name is aaron and it's spelled (laughs) a-h-r-i-n anyways all right on to the next one uh, we love The Office. So, we do? yes, okay. we do. So, John Krasinski was supposed to take Jenna Fisher to. Who's Jenna Fisher for those of us? Isn't that the Star Wars girl? What? <laughs> it's Pam and Jim! I don't know these people's oh my real God! names. Uh, I don't know these people's real names. Pam and Jim! Okay, but I don't okay, know. Okay, so they were supposed to go to the Stanley Cup together. Okay. And last minute, she couldn't go. Okay. So you guys want to guess who he took in her place? Um, what's his name? Dwight. Good guess. Okay. No. Her ex. Roy. Yes. What's his real name since <laughs> I don't know that either? You know, I actually don't know and it's not part of it. So I have no idea. <sighs> I know that he's been, he was in that one movie that we watched like a year ago. Was and it, we, no, that wasn't a movie. It was a show. It was um, Mayor of Easttown, wasn't it? She was her, or he was her... Ex-husband? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. I'm like blurring it together, and then we realize ha. we when, ha. We, when we finish, you say that I do that. Like we know this guy from something. We know this guy from something. Oh yeah, it's that guy. He's a very forgettable guy. <laughs> cast. They had a big cast for that. Oh yeah, but yeah. David Denman. Oh, what a forgettable name. Anyways, so he he posted it on social media and her response was, ha ha ha, be careful he doesn't leave you at the game because that's what, he, that's what he did to her in the show. He looks like he's questioning his decision. <laughs> Do I want to be here? Yeah. Will I be made fun of for being here? Yeah. Or maybe he thinks Jim's gonna punch him. <laughs> Payback time. We are at a hockey game. I mean, they could I go. Like, they could go put the gloves on. Go get on the ice. How many years? Like twenty plus years ago, right? It was early two thousands that it came out, right? Mm, I don't think two thousand four. I think closer to two thousand eight. I'm pretty sure. I think it was early two thousands. First episode was two thousand five. I was fucking almost spot on. That's the middle. Of the 2000s. And typically shows like this come out in the fall. So it's almost 2006. Split the difference. He's just trying to get closer to 2010 of what he guessed. Nah. All right. Anyways. So next one. Okay. Uh, Flavor Flav is attempting to save Red Lobster by ordering all their cheddar bay biscuits and everything else on their menu. So, so basically he was helping one red lobster. Well, so here's the problem. And here's the thing that people that were looking at this situation are considering. Mm -hmm. The reason they ended up in this situation was because they sold their assets mm -hmm. to a, um, I always forget what this is called. Hedge fund? No. Investment? Um, uh, it's a venture capital firm. Ah. Oh. So they sold it all off mm -hmm. and the VC firm only wanted the property, obviously. Right. So they were renting mm -hmm. their own property back from the VC firm. For crazy high. Yeah. So they're they, always in the negative, I'm sure. Yeah. They're they were never they were never gonna win that deal. Right. Unless they found somebody that would just buy them out, right? I don't are they Weren't they part of like, wasn't it more than just Red Lobster? Weren't they like, weren't three who or four parent, restaurants? Who the parent company is? Yeah. I don't know. I've no, never, I mean, have you ever been to a Red Lobster? Yeah, a long time I've ago. been to a Golden Crow, but I've never been to a Red Lobster. Because you know how like um, Bonefish and Carrabba's yeah. and the, there's else. two other ones. There's a Steakhouse mm -hmm. and uh, Outback. Mm -hmm. and, so it's Outback and then I think... It's not Ryan's. It's actually a fancy one that we don't have right, around right. here. Are all owned by the same company. Yeah. yeah. But they, I'm pretty sure Red Lobster was in like a conglomerate like that. Um, Do you think it's with Applebee's? Applebee's was gone to shit also, um, I'm sure. I don't think we even have one anymore. Yes. Yeah, there's I one in Wheeland. Uh, okay, I think all the ones in Wilmington have closed. So Darden res Restaurants own... Red Lobster, but what else do they own? Ruth's Chris. Interesting. Uh, Eddie V's, the Capitol Grill. What's Eddie V's? I don't know. We don't have her on here. Olive Garden, Longhorn, Bahama Breeze, Season 52, Yard House, Cheddar's. Interesting. Oh, they only own them until uh, July 2014. So they divested them. Gotcha. They still own the other ones. Yep. Olive Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they have, they're like, eh, mm, Red Lobster. You're like, eh, the white trash seafood restaurant. Let's see. Let's get rid of you. Okay. Yeah. But growing up, I was always under the impre impression that it was like this fancy place. The only reason that we ever wanted to go there as kids. Like me and my brothers and friends and stuff was because they had the big lobster tanks when you walked in, so you like mm. could see the lobster swimming around. There was a local place here called Elizabeth that always had that. Did your did your grocery stores have that? Yeah. When you were a kid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because ours. I remember too. every time going grocery shopping with my you mom and like just staring at them. 
you know what? I think didn't didn't the Harris Teeter and Leland still have one? It was like in a corner by the butcher area. It's like Mandela effect. I'm pretty I don't sure they know. have one. I'm don't pretty know. sure they have one. I'm pretty sure not not I'm like, like visualizing it, wasn't, it but it wasn't now I'm like, questioning is it from my childhood or or present? It wasn't like an aquarium thing. It was like a corner little cubicle. Yeah. So the ones that we had in my grocery store growing up, Martin's, um, they had like these, they were like a round island thing. Okay. And it was glass all the way around. Yeah. And then it had like, so it was uh, like a pizza, like a quarter slice, right? And mm-hmm. that was like the thing that you would lift up and then you could reach in there and pull them out. I don't remember, you, did you put them in a bag like you do with your fucking, yeah. your uh, um, produce? I don't. I don't know what you were I'm supposed to sure put them the in. Butcher would pull them out for you. I'm pretty sure we did because they had rubber bands on their snappers, so yeah. they couldn't hurt you. You just reach in there. Yeah, but that's unsanitary to have like ra- random. People. They're alive. You're still gonna take them home and cook them. No, I meant having every rando putting their hand in. This is like be... in the 90s. They didn't care about <laughs> that shit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was the butcher who would. Mm, I don't know. Could you imagine? If every, like, uh, animal, like, Mm -hmm. type, if you just, like, went to the grocery store and they would chop the chicken's head off for you, like, you're like, I like that chicken and I want the breast and that's it. And they would just take it out right in front of you and just hack the head off and start butchering it. That'd be dope. That'd be awesome. No, that would not be. I wouldn't want to go grocery shopping if that was what was happening. Why? That'd be so cool. You'd be across in the produce section. Slaughtering a cow. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like just listening to that. No, I don't want they'd that. They'd be back they'd be back there with a uh They'd uh, be back, they'd be back, they'd be back. That's no, no, what sounds no, no. like you were doing. They'd be, they'd be back, back there with a the, the, They'd be back there with a <laughs> shotgun. Oh my god. Put the cow or the pig down. So you just they hear would this. put you down. Anyways. I was just oh my god. <laughs> so you know how like there's all these niche restaurants, like right? Like there's medieval times mm-hmm. where you go and mm-hmm. there's Did, have you ever been to a medieval no, there's, I one, there's one in Chicago. I've never been to it, though. The closest one is down here in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, I'm sure they have everything because that's a fucking it's weird a place to go. Pirates Voyage, I think, and Medieval Times. I've never been to either in oh. my entire life. So, but so you have that, and then you have. Because I remember then you I have, grew up with Golden Corral. Then you so have we're dicks. looking at low budget. Here. We didn't have Golden Corral <laughs> until like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The one that we drove past when when I took you guys up there a couple of years ago, I that, that was the first and only one I'd ever seen. Gotcha. And that, like, that was built after I got out of the army. Ah, so it's not very old. Um, no, but so okay, so you have those places, then you have dicks, right, where they treat you like shit. Okay. So you have all these, you have all these themed restaurants. Mm -hmm. Butcher house. Slaughterhouse is better. Mm, Sure. Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse slabs. Yeah, I'm on to something here. And then you go in, you pick your animal, they slaughter it, they cut every, cut cut up all, all the all the different And you leave covered in blood. No, 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 no. Yes. No, oh, actually, so they have the place where you can go and like break like computer equipment and stuff and like Yeah. Yeah, so you could do it maybe. They might teach you, but I would rather the professional do it. And here would be the best part. Mm-hmm. You show up with your ice chest, right? And you get to take the rest home? Yeah. You and your family eat whatever cuts you wanted there in the restaurant, and they package up all the rest for you nice and neatly, put it in your ice chest. Every country boy listening to this is, he just needs to go and shoot his own stuff and take care of it himself. Why would he go to a restaurant and have somebody else do it for them? He's not a real man. It's the experience. No, there's farms that will let you do that, but it's the experience. And then you can have like it's the experience of listening to the pig squeal one last time. Are you fucking kidding me? That would ruin the experience nah. for me. I would not eat. Your beans don't scream, so you wouldn't get it. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, you get the pig, you throw it on the little hook and everything. No, thank you. To let the blood out, drain the blood. People do it no, with deer. Why not with pigs and cows? No, thank you. And you have them. You have them. Uh, Get everything dry rubbed and everything for you with your favorite rubs and seasonings so that you can bring it home and hang it in your garage and cure it. That's what Nick does. 
my buddy Nick Lavar. He makes like his own Italian sausage and stuff and just hangs it from the rafters in his garage. Seriously. Should we go visit them this summer? I texted him yesterday and asked him when he was available next mm-hmm. month. So. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. What's the next topic? Don't leave dead air. Come on. You should have been scrolling already. Oh, I, I had something ready, but it doesn't really sure. go from bloody pig. So I changed it. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> um, did you hear no. about Kelly Stafford, Matthew Stafford's wife, who admitted on a podcast to fucking with him when he was playing for Georgia and doing no. his backup? No. You didn't hear about this at all? No. So they're married right. now, and he plays for the Rams now. But when he was playing for Georgia... People most know him from playing for Detroit. He he was like the Lions quarterback. He's only been with the Rams for a couple of years. Oh, okay. I don't... I never heard about these people until it went viral. He's a goony-looking motherfucker. A what? He's a goony-looking motherfucker. Okay. Anyways, so they're married, and she admitted on a podcast that she was toxic during their relationship and fucked with his backup just to make him mad. And so now everybody's coming for her for essentially letting the world know that she's a terrible human being. So what would you do if you were dating somebody... And oh, you don't want to put your own name out there? If you were dating somebody okay. and they went and fucked your back up. I wouldn't be with them. Exactly. This... So he's a little bit toxic but this too is... if he went running after her for it. But this is uh, like a Blue Mountain State inspired story it sounds like because that's what, what's his name? Um... What's the character's name? The quarterback. I, think, I won't say Alan, but no, that's that's what's his name's real name. I never watched Alan that. Richtenson or whatever is uh, Thad's real name. Okay. So the quarterback, who was the backup the majority of the time, okay. that was like his luxury was that the starters were too busy working out and putting in effort. So he got all the girls. He didn't want to start because he was the one that could have sex and do everything else. Which is how she described the backup, that he was the bad boy. And There you go. See? Insp- they were inspired by Blue Mountain State. <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Yep. When did Blue Mountain State come out? I don't know. I'll say when 2010. When did Blue Mountain State come out? January 11th, 2010. The leak came out in 2009. I need to rewatch that. Dude, I was, was fucking good. on. All right, so back to sports. Okay. Uh, Nike came out with UV blocking contact lenses that are being banned um, because it potentially improves their depth perception. You mean so, banned from sports? Yes. It, so they're this, like they make them look like crazy with red eyes. This has been a they've this has been a thing, but it's been a crazy expensive to get. Really? They used to have. It was like an experimental thing along. I don't know if Oakley did it, but mm-hmm. it was an experimental thing a long time ago where they had like transitions type. Yeah. But the problem with that was when you see somebody with their eyeglasses, yep. it takes a long time for them to yep. transition back and forth. So you get people that walk into a dark building and they just have to stand there because they can't take their contacts. Or you can How take your glasses ago off. Were you? I don't know. It was a long time ago. Okay. So I actually bought the transition contact lenses um, twenty nineteen. Because my eyes are so sensitive. I have light green eyes and it, they're just so sensitive outside. Um, I got you call those in, bitch eyes. Fuck you. I got talked into them at the eye doctor um, just to try them out. And I bought one pack of them okay. um, to kind of use in addition to my regular contact lenses. Um, and they made my eyes look almost brown. And even though they improved my overall um, sensitivity, the fact that my green eyes looked brown why, freaked me out. Why would improving death perception be a problem? Because having any sort of 
contacts or glasses for anybody that has an astigmatism mm-hmm. or even like myopia, that's going to improve your depth perception. So it's, where's where's the cutoff between correcting your vision right. and, and adding to your... Yeah, so it's saying that it potentially helps the athlete's ability to see fast-moving objects and improves depth perception by object tracing. So I guess it's... Who posted uh, this? I'm... The, no, I don't know who that is. Looks like a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> and then these are the two options. Gray-green for golf and running... Amber for soccer, tennis, baseball, and football. Nike Max site. That's Nike? You said Under Armour. Or you said Oakley, I mean. I never said Oakley and I never said Under Armour. You said those. You said those, not me. You said those. We'll play back the tape. Have you seen those commercials where people do that? They throw the flag, the challenge flag, and they play (laughs) they play Play back back the the tape. Yeah. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, they'll they're just like regular people having like a conversation like or they'll be like talking to the little kid and the little kid's like, you said I could have ice cream. They're like, no, I didn't. And the, ki- the, the kid will throw out the challenge flag and all of a sudden NFL refs come running out of nowhere with a thing and they actually review the footage and like, yeah, you did. Well, anyways, back to cost of living being so high. This one guy admitted to having 11 remote full-time jobs. And he posted his setup with 11 computers and the post-its as to what job it goes to. You don't need 11 computers. You can run virtual machines. Because. This guy's an idiot. Well, they're probably. You can even do virtual pro- desktop. They are probably given to him by his employer. So and this little icon right here, do you know what that is? That's virtual desktop. So if you click on there, you can literally set up multiple if you click there you can have multiple different desktops so you can be running all this stuff on one screen and then have another screen and there's a hot key so you can switch between them okay he says you know. between the 11 jobs okay he makes 1.3 million dollars a year and he barely does any work or did he give up his name no it's anonymous <laughs> and um he only works about one to two hours per day that's it so I, I, I would assume. So you wrote about this, this. Why aren't you on top of it? Why, why am I not doing eleven jobs at one time? Literally, the comments were full of, "Oh, I've been applying for jobs for months. Now I know who's taking my jobs. Oh, and this should be illegal. Blah blah blah." No, I don't think it should be illegal. I definitely think that people can have multiple jobs at one time. Um, I don't know about eleven. I don't know that you're actually doing decent work no, if you're not all jobs are hourly this isn't an hourly job right right no this is obviously salaried and he's barely he's probably delegating no, you have, tasks you can have things that are like production based or piece rate so if you have if you have a production schedule where you have to get out 10 physical items or 10 websites or whatever per week mm-hmm. if you accomplish that in an hour then right you're just done yeah no i mean okay I, I'm not ratting on this guy yeah. in a negative way. I I think that more people could potentially do this. That being said, employers are putting a stop to that. I know for a fact my sister, who works for the city of Philly, is being told just outed your own sister. by the 15th of July, everybody in the entire city has to come back to the office. And these are offices that no longer even have desks for these employees because they're putting desks in them. That's why they gave them to the 15th, <laughs> but they're not because their budgets are already maxed out and everything. So well, they'll, just, they'll just go to school, steal a couple of They're desks. like, no, sit on the floor, no, but you have to be in office. They go to school. They'll steal a couple of those little. So I, I'm just saying, desks. I think this is a great idea for somebody to have more than one job. That being said, it, employers are putting a stop to it. So I think because more than one person has figured out this loophole. It's not a loophole. It is a loophole. It's not a loophole. It is not how loopholes work. It is a loophole. It's not a loophole. A loophole is something where you find the only literal literal loophole Mm -hmm. in what is otherwise 
completely impenetrable. You can't find any other way around it. It's not a loophole if it's just normal work. And that's what you're assigned to a do. A lot of employee handbooks state you cannot have. That's not a loophole. And that's unenforceable. Okay. But yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So the same people when they're like, oh, they found loopholes in their taxes and that's why they don't pay as much as me or they pay not enough or what? Yeah. It's not a fucking loophole. It's literally the law. It's not a loophole. It's not how that works. Give us an example, Andrew. All the, the rich people that they're like, this should be taxed on their net worth. No, dumbass. <laughs> that's not how that works. The tax code is the tax code. It's not a loophole. They're doing exactly what their accountant, CPA, whatever. Some people are idiots and try and get away with other stuff. Okay. But the majority, like the Elon Musks and the Jeff Bezos and Mark Cuban and everybody else, they're not exploiting a fucking loophole. They're okay. literally doing exactly what the law says that they're allowed to do. Well, you sound like you're really angry. So would you like this public t- punching bag? Those are stupid. <laughs> so uh, New York um, has obviously experienced a lot of random acts of violence throughout the years, but I say it's definitely... Do you know why? Because they don't prosecute people. Yeah, that and also all the... You can go and rob a store. Migrants and if, the store that have been... if the store owner tries to protect his property and does any harm to you, the store owner will go to jail. Okay. So anyways, so. they've installed public punching bags to help deter random acts of violence so that you can walk up to what would be... They're talking about bringing back public hangings in Texas. Oh my God! For um, migrants that are sex offenders. Okay, I'm down for that. I, I mean, a, or a wood chipper, but... But a public hanging? Yeah, that's, that's a little... A little. It, sends a, it sends a message, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You heard about that girl that the guys were just prosecuted a couple of days ago? The 12-year-old girl? I don't remember how old she was. Maybe. But the guy, like, threw her body in the swamp after they killed her? No. Oh, yeah. Maybe I don't know about this. Yeah. So... We just sent like 220 soldiers into Mexico yesterday. What? So, yeah. And we're about to go to war with Russia. They they essentially just declared war on us like two or three days ago. Why were Me- why were soldiers sent to Mexico? I don't understand. I don't know. I didn't read into it. I was going to come back to it, but I haven't had the opportunity yet. Okay, ADD. Okay, that's why I bookmark things. Okay. Come back to them. <laughs> no, but uh, one of our drones... Um, it's unclear whether or not it was a misfire or what happened, but just killed a shitload of people in uh, what used to be Ukraine, but Russia is annexed in. It's One like, of our drones? Yeah. A U.S. made drone, U.S. made weapons were used by the Ukrainians on Russian civilians at a beach in Sevastopol or something. I don't know how it's pronounced, okay. which is in Crimea, okay. which is... I mean, technically, legally, according to world law, is still part of Ukraine, okay. but it's annexed right now by Russia. Okay. So one of our drones killed, like, I think it was like 100 people or something like that on the beach. There's people, like, with their phone footage of it. You can't, like, really see what's happening. Okay. And you can't, like, really hear. You just, it looks like, like a 1980s shark attack video where people are, like, running, and that's gotcha. all you can tell. And then you can hear some loud noises. Like, I wouldn't have known what was happening from the video that I watched without people Contact. writing it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe there's other videos. I only saw one. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it has been confirmed. Like, it's in, like, real news. It's oh, not just okay. that social media post. So, yeah. They said that they were going to retaliate. Joy. Which that's always how that happens. It's always tit for tat. Yeah, of course. But the last time, I shouldn't say the last time, a long, long time ago, the fat electrician has made a video about this. It's amazing. Okay. It was when uh, Iran fucked with some shipping lanes and some U.S. boats. Okay. And so we we issued a proportional response by destroying 90% of their Navy in like 12 hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we blew up like three of their um, uh, oil rigs. Like the ocean floating, whatever you want to call them. And uh, like all of their boats. Yeah. 
all of them. And they were, so, I mean, I kind of knew some of this, like there's always communication between the people like back. So the, the naval ships outside of the oil rigs, they were communicating like, Hey, we're going to blow this up. You have 10 minutes. And they're like, okay, okay, we're out of here. And they're like, so they gave them the time to evacuate. And then there was one where they didn't like, they were like, yeah, we're going to evacuate. And then they didn't. Uh-huh. And they started shooting at the boat and they're like, well, fuck you. <laughs> and then a, a Russian naval ship like pulled up and they radioed to them. They're like, what are you doing here? And they're like, uh, my command sent me here to take pictures for history. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. But they were like, they're like, state your purpose. And they're like, we're just here to take pictures, dude. We're just, we're chill. Just, yeah. Proportional response. Okay. Love it. We're going to get real proportional around here. <laughs> Can you see the joy all over his face? Valor Tristan's videos are awesome. He has the best videos. So, and he's very well read. That's actually where all this comes from. He'll buy a book mm -hmm. and he'll read the entire story. Mm -hmm. And then he'll even reach out to people that were there and like the author and stuff like that and get additional information, right. more context. And then he editorializes it to make it right. fun to watch. So you still learn, but it's not like the drone of a 300-page right. fucking book with monotone. Yeah. So you can... You can consume the same content in 30 minutes. And if you want to learn more, you can go get the book. And he typically puts the link to like an Amazon or whatever mm -hmm. for whatever book he got the story from so that he earns the commission from. And so he's got a good business model going on. Very good. Yeah. Well, the goodest. Yep. That's it. I'm going to go listen to this now and make sure that it sounds good. Okay. So you did. Well, you had an opportunity to blow out the mic at least once. So we'll see how that went. I don't remember what you were laughing about, but. You just want me to blow you. On yeah. that note, goodbye. Bye.